So in this lecture, uh, you all will be uh, informed about the Instabed and Nerve Doc, which you will be using in your oral surgery posting for doing minor oral surgical procedures. The nerves anesthetize for this nerve block. Anterior superior alveolar nerve, middle superior alveolar nerve, and the intraorbital nerve. Branches that is the inferior palpebral, lateral nasal, and superior labial. Areas anesthetized include the pulps of the maxillary central incisors through the canine on the injected side. In about 72% of the patients, pulse of the maxillary premolars and the mesiobuccal root of the first molar are also anesthetized. Buccal periodontium, bones on the same side, lower eyelid, lateral aspect of the nose and the upper lip are also anesthetized. The anatomical landmarks for this includes the intraorbital bridge, intraorbital supraorbital notch, infraorbital notch, anterior teeth, and the pupils of the eye. Now we can discuss about the indications and contraindications for the The indications include extraction or procedures involving more than two maxillary anteriors that is incisors till the premolars and the buccal tissue present adjacent to these two as well as in cases where infection or inflammation is present and cellulitis is present in that area that requires a nerve block because supraperiosteal injections are contraindicated in such situations. It is also indicated in case where supraperiosteal injections have been ineffective because of the presence of dense cortical bone. Now the contraindications include discrete treatment areas that is restricted to one or two tooth as well as the hemostasis of the localized area when desirable cannot be adequately achieved with the injection and local infiltration into that area is indicated. So in that case, you are not supposed to give this nerve block. There are two techniques for giving this nerve block. One includes the approach. The other one is the central incisor approach. In the bicuspid approach, the needle passes through the mucosa and the areolar tissue during the insertion and should pass beneath and later to the external maxillary artery and anterior facial wave. Whereas, in case of the central incisor approach, the needle passes through mucosa, areolar tissue, beneath the angular head of the quadrislabi superioris muscle, and it proceeds anteriorly to the origin of the caninus muscle and beneath the external maxillary artery and the anterior facial vein. Now, we will discuss about the technique for giving the infraorbital nerve block. In this, the patient is first comfortably placed in the chair and tilted so that the maxillary occlusal plane is at 45 degree angle to the floor. The patient is then asked to look directly forward as the supraorbital and the infraorbital notches are palpated. Then an imaginary line is drawn vertical through these landmarks as the pupil of the eyes, the infraorbital foramen, the bicuspid teeth and the mental foramen lie in a straight line if they are joined by an imaginary line. After palpating the supraorbital notch, we go towards the infraorbital notch and when the infraorbital notch is palpated, we go slightly downwards 0.5 centimeters where we find a shallow depression that is the infraorbital foramen. After that, a 25 gauge needle is then inserted into the mucobuccal fold from either of the approaches that is the bicuspid and the central incisor approach. This is the diagrammatic representation for the infraorbital nerve block landmarks. Here we can very well appreciate that if an imaginary line is drawn 
that passes to the superior orbital notch, inferior orbital notch, and the mental foramen. So, in that condition, they will all lie in a straight line, including the pupil of the eye. So, this was a brief idea about the positioning of the infraorbital foramen. Now the bicuspid approach. In this approach, the needle is inserted in a parallel line with the supraorbital notch, pupil of the eye, and the infraorbital notch, and the second bicuspid tooth. The needle should be inserted a sufficient distance from the labial plate to pass over the canine fossa. The thumb is then placed over the infraorbital foramen and should be used to maneuver the needle position so that it contacts the bone at the entrance of the foramen. Once the foramen is detected, a 2 ml of local anesthetic agent is deposited in this area and the thumb is held in position until the injection is completed. The infraorbital is being palpated with the index finger of the operator and the patient is asked to see in a straight line or in the forward direction. After the position of the infraorbital foramen is confirmed, then bisecting the maxillary premolars, the needle is passed parallel over there until it reaches the desired side, that is the infraorbital foramen. When the position of the needle is confirmed, then we deposit 2 ml of local anesthetic solution at the particular site and the block is completed. In this figure, we can very well appreciate the position of the needle when we are given the infraorbital nerve block. As we can very well see that it is bisecting the maxillary premolars in that direction along the straight imaginary straight line that involves the supraorbital notch, infraorbital notch, pupil of the eye, infraorbital foramen and the mental foramen. So by this we can appreciate the position of the needle while giving the infraorbital nerve block by the bicuspid approach. Now we will discuss about the central incisor approach. In this the direction of the insertion of the needle bisects the crown of the central incisor from the mesio incisal angle towards the distal incisal angle. The needle is inserted about 5 mm from the mucobuccal fold and guided in the position by the thumb marking the location of the infraorbital foramen. The point of needle should gently be contacted the boundaries of the foramen. Again, as we have discussed earlier, we will dis deposit. 2 ml of the local anesthetic solution at the desired site to complete the nerve block. Here we can appreciate that the direction of the needle insertion is from the mesio incisal angle towards the distal incisal angle of the central incisor and going towards the target area that is the infraorbital forum. So, this diagram depicts and explains the central incisal approach very appropriately so that the one can understand the direction of the insertion of the needle to achieve the infraorbital nerve block by using incisal approach. Whether the local anesthesia is achieved. Symptoms of anesthesia needs to be checked that are broadly divided into subjective and objective symptoms. Subjective symptoms are the symptoms that are subject specific, that is patient impact specific. In this, when inquired, the patient tells about tingling and numbness of the upper lip, lower eyelid, as well as on the side of the nose. And when the clinician checks the objective sinus symptoms, that is, instrumentation will demonstrate absence of pain in the area of the nerve supply. So, 
so this brings the end for the lecture